In this guided meditation, we will be including energy healing through the usage of Reiki and sound balls. The Reiki will be infused into the meditation as I guide you through my voice. The sound balls will be muted so as not to take away from the audio quality of this video. Sometimes the balls will distort the microphone and be distracting. However, they will be playing muted in the background and your energy field will be receiving the frequencies of the sound balls if you would like to receive them. If you do not wish to receive the Reiki or the sound balls, simply set the intention to be guided in the meditation and not receive the energy work. If you would like to receive the energy work, simply set the intention to receive the energy work as you are guided through the chakra balancing meditation. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start channeling Reiki and we will see where this meditation takes us. Anytime I lead a guided meditation, it is always intuitively channeled. I invite you to breathe in through your nose for a count of seven. Hold for a count of two and breathe out through your nose for a count of seven. Hold for a count of two and then return to regular breathing. Go ahead and in visual tree roots coming out of your feet. You have big mighty tree roots coming out of your left and right foot. These tree roots sink deep and widespread into Mother Earth. These tree roots do not necessarily have to connect with Mother Earth if you are in a high-rise building or unable to be outside. They connect with Earth through the intention and through ether or the other side through the energy worlds. Envision your tree roots going deep and widespread into Mother Earth. As you breathe, envision those tree roots pulling in the nutrients of Mother Earth that are most needed at this time to help you ground and receive this chakra balancing with the flowers. Every inhale, you breathe in grounding, earthy, protective, nourishing energy. Every exhale, things known and unknown to you release through your tree roots back to Mother Earth to be composted into nourishing and supportive energies to serve Mother Earth's highest good. Good. Now go ahead and place your hands on your root chakra. And as your hands are on your root chakra, envision the divine glittering ruby red light pouring into the root chakra. This ruby red light is symbolic of Mother Earth's root chakra. And you draw in this energy of Mother Earth through your feet to your root chakra. And then as the root chakra fills with this glittering ruby red light, you envision a grounding cord of red light dropping from your root chakra down to Mother Earth's core. Down to her root chakra core. Further grounding you and further stabilizing you.
Now that you have your grounding cord and your grounding roots, and we have Reiki channeling into the root chakra, I invite you to envision red flowers beginning to sprout in your root chakra. And as they sprout and as they grow, they take in through their roots all known and unknown energies, emotions, narratives, stories, ancestral baggage, past life baggage that no longer serves you, that you no longer resonate with, that you're ready to let go of. They draw that in through their roots, through their stems, through their stalks. And as they do so, you notice the flowers start to bloom and blossom. And as they bloom and blossom, you see red roses, lush with beautiful petals. And you see dainty yet hardy red carnations. Vibrant red petunias. Soft red hollyhocks backed by large green leaves and large durable stalks. And as these flowers grow and bloom, they go through Mother Earth's natural cycles. You witness them go from a sprout to something with the stalk and the bud of a flower on top to a beautiful and red and luscious blooming flower. And this beautiful flower, in honor of you and your desire to connect with the flowers, works with you and takes with it everything that the root chakra is ready to release at this time to come into more of a state of balance. And one by one, the flowers start to wilt, the petals start to fall, the leaves start to deteriorate. And as they do, you notice that your root chakra feels lighter and brighter than it has in a really long time. And one by one, the flowers drop through the grounding root chakra cord down to Mother Earth's root chakra core, where they share with her their stories of existence and their stories of collaboration with you. And then they are composted and redistributed elsewhere on Mother Earth to serve in her evolution and journey as a sentient being. And this is how the flowers will continue to show up as we work through the chakras. Now that the flowers have fallen and moved on from the root chakra, your root chakra is glowing with that ruby red energy you scan the root chakra and see if it needs any further attention. And if it does, you send a few loving breaths into the root chakra, aiding in the circulation of energy. And before moving to the sacral chakra, you sprinkle some flower seed in the root chakra so that when you feel called to work with the flowers and the chakras, you can easily call in the flowers again through their seeds. The seeds connect you to the flower streams of consciousness. You thank your root chakra and you thank the flowers for working with you and you move on to the sacral chakra. 
with the sacral chakra. You place your hands there. And you envision a beautiful orange light filling the sacral chakra. This beautiful orange light fills the sacral chakra, cleansing it, revitalizing it, recharging it, helping it work out any kinks that it might have. And then you notice little flowers are starting to sprout. And these flowers work their way up from seed to sprouts, to flowers with beautiful stalks and large leaves. You see flowers that are short yet hardy like the marigolds, a vibrant orange clustered together. You see orange bird of paradise, orange roses, and orange wildflowers, along with any orange flowers that come to mind that you are familiar with. And these flowers grow, and as they grow, they draw up the energies that the sacral chakra no longer wishes to hold on to. Stories, emotions, narratives, ancestral baggage, past life energy. These energies are drawn out of the sacral chakra by the flowers. And as these energies are drawn out of the sacral chakra and absorbed into these beautiful flowers, you notice yourself feeling lighter and brighter. And as you start to lighten and brighten, the flowers start to wilt and droop and the leaves start to fall and fade. They honor the cycles of Mother Earth and they make their way down that grounding cord back to Mother Earth to share their stories with her. And she redistributes that energy elsewhere on Mother Earth to serve her in her evolution journey. And you realize as the flowers are cycling with the chakras that you are also aligned and in tune with the cycles of Mother Earth and you realize that it's okay to grow things and let them bloom and let them go as life changes and you change and you realize it's okay for some things to come back for some flowers or flowers that return every year and some just bloom once a year and with that in mind, you fill your sacral chakra with beautiful, bright, orange light circulating out any remaining energy that the sacral chakra would like to release, known and unknown to you, correlated to the sacral chakra. And then you plant some flower seeds that you can return to for the next time you wish to work with the flowers and the chakras. And you move on to the solar plexus chakra. And as you move on to the solar plexus chakra, you place your hands there and you envision a beautiful and bright sunny yellow light filling the solar plexus chakra. And as it fills the solar plexus chakra, you find yourself laying a little more relaxed yet confident or sitting a little taller. This light is helping you reclaim some of your power, shed some self-righteousness that sometimes comes with feeling disempowered. Light is supporting the inner adolescent that can be found in the sacral chakra. And as things shift in the sacral chakra, 
you see flowers begin to bloom and blossom. You see flowers like sunflowers and little daisies. The sunflower is growing quite tall with mighty stalks and huge leaves and little bees buzzing around them. And the daisies, smaller, yet just as beautiful and bright with their yellows. You see other little yellow wildflowers blooming in the solar plexus chakra. And you watch the flowers as they grow and fill the solar plexus chakra. And then as the cycles of life kick in, the flowers which have drawn up all kinds of energies and emotions and stories and narratives, ancestral baggage, past life baggage related to your solar plexus chakra. These flowers have drawn these energies up and absorbed them. And now they're ready to return to Mother Earth from whence they came. And one by one, they start to shed their petals, shed their leaves, drop their seeds and break down and compost and return to Mother Earth through the grounding cord. And there they share with Mother Earth their journey, their stories, their collaboration with you. And Mother Earth listens and redistributes them elsewhere on Mother Earth to aid her in her evolution and journey as a sentient being. And this collaboration between you and the flowers and Mother Earth continues as you move up to the next chakra, the heart chakra. And you place your hands on your heart chakra and you envision a beautiful emerald green or meadow green or tropical forest green filling your heart, filling your heart with green light rays, really revitalizing and reharmonizing and nourishing and supporting and strengthening your heart chakra. And the heart chakra has the strongest electromagnetic field in the body. And you really pour in that healing green energy to support the heart and all that it does, known and unknown to you. And as you do so, you feel your heart open and expand as a mixture of tree energy and flower energy comes in. Your heart opens and expands with the energy of the pines, the evergreens, the banyan trees, the cottonwood trees, the mangrove trees. And you see these magnificent trees going through their cycle their life cycle. And then alongside the trees, you notice moss on the ground and on the barks of the trees. You also notice green roses and tall green Irish bell flowers. And there's also a sprinkling of green petunias And the trees and the flowers and the moss, they work on multiple levels in your multi-layered heart chakra, working in ways known and unknown to you, helping move out clouds of anger and self-hatred, grief, overwhelm, moving that out so that way the heart can really shine and come back into balance with the frequencies of the high heart and the beauty and wisdom and integrity of your soul that can be found in the heart. 
and the trees and the flowers as they grow, as they go through their life cycles. They draw up everything from all the layers of the heart that no longer serves you, that you no longer wish to hold on to, that your soul is ready to let go of. They draw up and move out energies and emotions related to the shadow self, stories and narratives that you no longer wish to resonate with. They draw up and move out ancestral baggage that you have worked through consciously and unconsciously. And they draw up and move out past life energies and samskaras and stories known and unknown to you that you have moved through and learned lessons from. And as they draw this out, your heart glows bright, bright, bright green, beautiful emerald green a luscious screen and it glows brighter and brighter and brighter and the brighter your heart glows the bigger your heart begins to feel the more expansive your breaths seem to feel and you notice the trees start shedding their leaves and the flowers start shedding their petals And the trees begin to bit by bit crumble down and break down and dissolve. And the flowers begin to cycle down that grounding cord mixed in with the energy of the trees. And they take their stories to Mother Earth, sharing with her their journey and collaborating with you. And their journey as beautiful plant beings here on Mother Earth. And Mother Earth listens and lovingly redistributes these energies once they've been composted elsewhere on Mother Earth to serve her and her evolution and journey as a sentient being. And then we move up to the throat chakra. And we fill it with beautiful blue energies. And these beautiful blue energies are like a sapphire hue, or maybe a sky blue or a cerulean blue. Really healthy blue that you resonate with. Beautiful blue light. And this beautiful blue light helps balance and clear the sh throat chakra, which is the chimney of the heart. It makes way for the heart to express itself when you are speaking and when you are co-creating with the universe. The throat chakra also aids in passing along messages to all the chakras. It is the master communicator in your energy system. And with this in mind, the light grows. It deep cleans little areas in the throat chakra that are known and unknown to you that need a bit of communication and connection and reconnection TLC, reconnecting you with the truth of your soul, helping you hear your inner guidance more easily, helping you speak and act and create from a place of the heart. And as your throat fills with these blue energies, you see the flowers and the blooms starting again from the bottom, making their way up. You see flowers that are a mixture of blue and indigo. You see blue columbines, blue petunias. You see the blueberries that come from little sweet white flowers. You see verbena, and you see little blue wildflowers. And as you see these flowers, you feel them drawing up the energies from your throat chakra that no longer serve you. And you breathe into those spaces of the throat chakra that the flowers 
by working in, helping the flowers work. You breathe in through your nose and you exhale through your mouth, imagining that light going out through the front and the back of your throat chakra, really helping clear out any congestion going on in this very important connective and communicative chakra. You do this breath again, breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Exhaling that blue light through the front and the back of the throat chakra. And as you do so, you notice the flowers have more and more clusters and their colors are deepening in their shades of blue. There's flowers that are blue that you've never even seen before that have started to grow and develop here. And as they grow, they're drawing up and moving out. Old ways of communicating and relating to communication they're drawing out stories around co-creation and limiting ways of speaking and believing that take away from the joy that can be found in the co-creation process. They draw away energies that get in the way of creativity and play and pleasure. They draw energies known and unknown to you from the ancestors, ancestral baggage, as well as past life, lessons that have been learned that your soul is ready to let go of. They draw old emotions and narratives and stories that you no longer resonate with, you've already done the work on and you're ready to move through. And as they do so, one by one, the flowers start to wilt and the petals start to fall. The leaves start to come off and the stalks and stems start to break and they drop down through that grounding cord down to Mother Earth and they share their stories of their life with her, collaborating with you in their lives as flowers. Their Mother Earth listens and composts them and redistributes them elsewhere on Mother Earth to serve her in her evolution and journey as a sentient being. You move up to focusing on your third eye, gently massaging it with your fingertips. And as you focus on your third eye, you envision a beautiful purple, lavender or amethyst colored purple, filling your third eye. And as it fills the third eye, you feel your eyelids twitch a little, your forehead might crinkle a little and then relax. You feel shifts in your brain as light goes into the third eye. And as this light goes into the third eye, you breathe into the third eye, helping the light circulate. And you envision the light of the third eye, clearing out any limiting ways of viewing yourself and viewing life, any limiting ways of viewing your family, your friends, your partners, your children, your co-workers, and you fill it with this light that helps you view and navigate the world through a lens of love and beauty and wonder and joy, a lens that helps you see minor setbacks and major setbacks as an opportunity to grow and deepen your love with yourself and your soul and Mother Earth. And as you envision this light, you notice the flowers start to bloom in the third eye. There's beautiful lavender bushes growing. Purple petunias, purple pansies. There's verbena, purple and whitish morning glories. And as these flowers grow, 
you feel shifts with your actual eyes happening as well flowers grow where your eyes are as well working with your third eye and your eyes to really help all parts come into harmony with one another and the flowers draw from the eyes and the third eye any energies and emotions stories and narratives that take away from you seeing through a lens of love and beauty and wonder they draw up and take out any energies and ancestral baggage or past life lessons that have been learned that relate to inner vision and physical vision and as they draw these energies up and out into their blooms you see the leaves begin to fall and the petals begin to drop and the flowers begin to leave the third eye and the physical eyes and they drop down that grounding cord to mother earth where they share with her their stories and their tales and their journey as flowers and as collaborators with you and as they share mother earth listens and then she lovingly redistributes the energies to other parts of mother earth to serve her in her journey and evolution as a sentient being and you get to the crown chakra and as you're in the crown chakra there's this beautiful white sparkly light similar to a white quartz light shining around your head or an aura quartz around your head very pure, very sparkly very of this world but not of this world and this light is symbolic of like your connection with source energy as well as your connection with your soul and mother earth it's a very ethereal white light and it fills the crown chakra expanding the crown chakra helping the crown chakra clear out any clutter in it related to your connection with source energy your connection with your soul your connection with the universe also helping move out overly active mental energies that can sometimes congest the crown chakra and this light serves as like a spiritual food for the crown chakra and as this light pours into the crown spiritually feeding it you notice that it also serves as a spiritual food for the flowers you see the flowers begin to grow and you see white yarrow peacefully with white flowers white roses white lotus white water lilies white daisies white snapdragons growing and blossoming and blooming in the crown and you notice there's also a trellis for some of the flowers to climb on or grow on or just grow out of and this trellis is symbolic of your connection with source energy and your soul so the flowers grow and climb higher making it easier for you to connect with your higher power and with your soul and with the universe and they draw out all energies and emotions all past life lessons that have been completed, all ancestral baggage anything known and unknown to you that you're ready to release related to the crown chakra and what the crown chakra entails and you notice as the flowers grow up the trellis that eventually you can't see the trellis anymore 
can't see the flowers anymore, for they have gone into the realm of the creator and creatrix of all that is, source energy. And they clear and they draw out all mental energies and thought forms of self-doubt and over-worry and go-go-go mentality, making way for you to cultivate inner peace, making way for you to sleep easier at night. And then you notice that the flowers start to wilt. You notice flower petals dropping from above you down the trellis. You notice the trellis starting to break apart. You notice the flowers and the trellis and the stems and the stalks all dropping down to Mother Earth. And there they go to be composted by Mother Earth. And they share their stories with her their stories of collaboration with you and their stories of what it was to be a flower incarnate this lifetime. And Mother Earth listens and then she lovingly redistributes them elsewhere on Mother Earth to serve her in her journey and evolution as a sentient being. And then you draw your attention back to your tree roots. As you draw your attention back to your tree roots, you make sure to breathe and send breath to your tree roots. You send three cleansing breaths, cleaning out the roots, helping them flush out any residue from that which has been shed. Breathing in through your nose for a count of five. Holding for a count of five. Exhaling from your mouth for a count of five. Holding for a count of five. Do this two more times. And then you bring your attention to that grounding cord. And you pull the grounding cord back up from Mother Earth, letting that energy be reabsorbed into the root chakra. And you keep the roots of the trees intact, trusting that you'll know when to ground again and trusting that the roots will stay intact until it's time for you to ground again. And if you're not quite so sure about that, just setting the simple intention that the roots stay in place for the next 24 hours. Our root chakras need the most attention and it is important to ground daily if possible. If not possible, Try to get into a practice of grounding every other day. The more present you can be in your body, the easier it is to maintain a sense of balance within yourself and within your chakra system. I hope this meditation and energy healing was useful for you. It was a pleasure creating it. And I will see you next time on the next meditation. Be well.